Hi everyone, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about using InShot on your iPad. Now I use InShot, which is a photo and video editing tool, normally on my mobile phone. However, I do find it a bit of a strain on my eyes and I went into the app store and I just downloaded it onto my iPad and it works exactly the same on my iPad as it does on my mobile phone. The only difference is, is that whatever you do on your iPad, doesn't float over to the app on your mobile phone. So if you're starting editing on your iPad, then you need to finish that edit on your iPad. You can't do it on either or. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to edit a video using InShot on your iPad. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is actually put InShot on your iPad. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the App Store. Now I know that InShot is compatible with an Android. So if you have a tablet of any sort that you use instead of an iPad, then you can download InShot onto that. I use an iPad. So um, all of my recordings and trainings are going to be on the iPad. So just type in here InShot and it will come up here as InShot Video Editor. As you can see here, it's here. Now, obviously, if you haven't got it on your iPad, it will say install. So just go ahead and install it. OK, so then all you need to do is go ahead and open the app and you just have these options. I'm just going to quickly, briefly go over this. For those of you who are new to InShot, you have a video option, a photo option and a collage option. These three options are where you can either edit a video, edit a photo, or create a collage. So it's not just video editing, you can also do photos and collages on it. You can also come down here to where it says materials and click the all button. And there are some different materials that you can upload into your InShot editor to help you create different effects, but we're not gonna go into that right now. All you need to do is click the video option and then pull in a video from your library. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one and click OK. OK, so here we are in InShot on the iPad. If you just have a little look here, you can see the difference in how much I have to edit when I'm doing it on the iPad. So I highly recommend that you consider doing your editing on the iPad because it really makes things a lot easier to look at. So inside of your InShot app, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the canvas size is what you want it at. So at the moment, I've uploaded a portrait video because I'm going to create this for my YouTube shorts. But if you want to change it to a horizontal, all you need to do is come down here to the bottom left where it says canvas. And you can choose from any of the canvases that they've got available. So if you were doing a standard horizontal video, you would choose it like that. But I'm going to carry on doing my 9 by 16 video. If you need to zoom it in, you can use the zoom feature to make it come closer or out. And if you wanted to add a background color to it, if it was in the horizontal, you'd be able to do the back background like this. So if I was in horizontal, I would go to background and I could blur the background to match my video. That's if you were in a horizontal. So once you know that your ratio is what you want it to be, just go ahead and click the tick. If you've got more than one video in there so in other words if you've uploaded different takes there will be double ticks there and you just need to make sure that you tick that and it covers all of them okay so now you know how to do the canvas i'm just going to quickly run along you can see that you can add music you can add stickers text filters pip is a video in a video or a photo in a video so if i were to choose say like this one it's going to place that video on top of my other video. So that's what the pip means. And you can use that if you want to put like a photo on top of it, or if you're talking about something that comes in really handy. If you don't want it to stay there, all you need to do is click the delete option and it will remove that. So I'm just, or you can use this go back button and it will go back. So it's up to you whether you wanna use the go back button or the delete button when you do something and you don't wanna keep it. The pre-cut is where you cut it beforehand. I prefer to use the split because the split is a much easier way of actually editing your video. You've got the delete option, the volume option, the speed option, the animation option, the crop option, the opacity, replace, voice effects, duplicate, rotate, flip, freeze, and reverse. There's lots of different things you can do in here, but I'm just gonna do a basic edit. And this is what you can do when you're just starting out. If you're a beginner, 
at editing videos, you just want to make sure that you can use these basic functions and these will be really easy for you to use. So I'm going to show you how to split the clip now. So what you do is to move the clip, you use your finger and you just move it across left to right like this. OK, so I'm just going to go back and then you just move it and then you just click the split button. And what it's going to do, if you can see, is it splits the clip into two. There you can see I've highlighted the clip that I want to delete. So all I need to do now is press the delete button and it cuts that out. So now what I'll do is I'll keep going through that, just editing out any delays or mistakes in what I'm saying or anything like that. So then I cut my video down to the length that I want it to be. OK, so I'm going to split it again there like so, and I'm going to split it. And now you can see that there is this light, small little bit in between there, and I'm going to delete that. Now, what that's done is it cuts it out. Now, you can see that there's also, if I just move along a bit, this little icon that showed up between the two splits. Now, that's what's known as a transition option. So when you click on that little icon, you can see that you can actually add a transition if you want to. Now, I don't want to add a transition into my video because I'm actually doing it so that it runs all the way through without a transition. But if you did want to add a transition, you can choose from all these different options. And I'll just show you briefly what one of them might do. So say like if I did this one, you can see how it goes through the transitions. Look, watch. But the, the, the problem with transitions, and I'll tell you this now as a video editor, is that when you add a transition to your video, it takes a portion of the video to create the transition. So if you've got wording of your speaking, transitions don't always work as well. Now, if you have a gap between each point and you leave a pause, then that's when a transition will work really well. So that's just a little pro tip there. If you're adding transitions and you're talking between clips, you may lose what you're saying. If, however, you finish the sentence and have a pause like that, then you'll be able to put the transition between that pause. I hope that helps. If it did, hit that like button because I would love to see that you're enjoying this video. When you've finished your edits, you might want to add some text onto your video. So if I wanted to add some text onto this video now, all I would need to do is click the text option and it's going to give me this box. So I'm going to write my text in here. So you just write your text in. Now, in order to customize your text, like you see on the screen, there are some options. You see along here, you've got the keypad, you've got a color wheel, you've got a font selector, you've got a position. In other words, you can do left writing, middle writing and right writing, and you can do animation. So just briefly, I'll just quickly go through what all of these were, what all of these do for you so that you can then edit your own text in your InShot. So if we go back to the keyboard that just brings the keyboard up in case you want to write more. If you go to the color option, the first option is text. So my text at the moment is, um, red. If I change my text to a different color, I can change it to blue. And you can just choose the color wheel by moving the color wheel along. And there are quite a lot of different options that you can choose from. You see, they've got these funky ones that are sort of like blended as well, which is really nice. You can also use the Doppler option, which takes the color from your video, which is really good if you want the color to be part of your video, or you may have a brand color that you might want to put in there and adding that brand color to your video will help you pull that color in. The next option is the border. So the border is what's around the outside of the writing. OK, not the square background, but the writing. So if you want to change that, you can click any of the colors again to change the border color. OK, the next one along is a shadow. So you can actually create a shadow. And if I were to put the shadow as white and then I made it more thicker, you can see that it's just starting to blend. But it really depends on the color. You see how you can just about see that. I might just zoom in on that. You can see it now. If you don't want a, a shadow, that's fine. Just go to the zero option there. Then the label is actually the background. So the label 
is the background behind it. So I've got a square here. You can see how you can have it semi-opaque. You can have it corners. You can have it circular. You can have it at an angle. You can just have it plain with like a border, a dotty border, a round border. So there's all sorts of different options. And again, to change the color, you just need to either use the Doppler or just go through and choose from the color wheel that they've given you as an option. And the opacity, of course, is like how 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 solid the color is. So if you don't want it too solid, you can make it a little bit see through or you can make it block. So that's how you do the text edits. The next one is if you want to change the actual font, you've got quite a few different options that you can choose from. Also, if you are on the pro version, you can upload your own font. So if you have a brand font and you want to keep that in here, you can actually upload that to here for you. Also, if you want your font to animate, you can choose different ways of it animating when you, when people are watching your video. There's lots of different ways that you can use and you, you'll find one that suits you um, when you're doing the edit. So anything that you do and you, you want to do, stop, you can just click the basic and then it goes off. You can also do the animation on the entry of the writing and the exit of the writing. So you can change that by using this in our option here on the right. Once you're happy, you just click the um, tick and it's there. Now, I just want to quickly go through the positioning because in order to move the writing, just make sure that the text is highlighted and then you should be able to move it around the screen with your finger. You can make it bigger and smaller using this little thing in the corner. And if you want to move it at an angle, use two fingers and just twist it and you can twist it like so. Another thing to do is if you want to edit the writing, you can just use that little pencil and then you can go ahead and edit it and correct it. If you don't want it at all, then you can use the delete option here. Also, you can have it so that the writing stays on the screen for the whole video. To do that, you would click the left hand option and it gives you beginning of the video or beginning of the clip. If it was the beginning of the video, you do that and it takes it straight to the beginning. You can again do that for the end, video end or clip end. Also, if you want to just have it where you want it, you can just drag it with your finger left or right. So that's how you can do that, which is quite cool. So let's just leave that on there for now. Once you're happy, click OK and you're done. Now, if you get through the rest of the video and you realize that you might have made a mistake in that and you want to get back to it, to find the text option, you can see there's that very faint yellow line at the bottom. You just have to click the, vid the text option again and it brings it up. Another thing you might want to add to your video is a sticker. So in order to get the stickers in, you just click the sticker option. This time you have the option for sticker. You click the sticker option and then you have a few choices. You can have a sticker from your photos. So you can choose from your camera roll. You can import it or cut it out. So that might be like a cut, like a sticker maybe of your logo or something like that. You can have a GIF. In other words, you can use the trending GIFs. So you can use anything that you've got in here. If you're on the free plan, it will tell you that it's free. If you're on the pro plan, it will tell you if it's pro. Go ahead and use what's here, or you can do a search and write in what you want. So say like if you wanted to add a subscribe button, you could just add that in, do a search, and it will bring all of the subscribe buttons you want. When, you want, when you've seen the one you want, you just go ahead and click it. And again, it's going to place it on the screen. You can then move it around the screen with your finger. You can also move the subscribe button so that it's um, a different lengths. If you wanted the text and the and the sticker to cross over, in other words, you want the text on the screen at the same time, you go onto it, you press and hold the sticker option until it lights up like this. And then with your finger, you can move it so that it shows over at the same time as the text, like so. And then if you just move the video, you can see that the text and the sticker are on the screen at the same time. So that's something that you can do. When you're happy, click the tick button and that's what you do. 
Now you can just go through this, doing this as you wish and until you get to the point where you're happy to end the video. Now, if there was any area that you wanted to speed up, and I think this is important for you to know this little hack as well. If you were to speed up a clip, you have the particular part of the clip that you want to speed up. So I've got this end bit here that I want to speed up. You click on the speed option, and then you have this option where you can speed it up in increments to up to 10. And you just choose what you want it to do. And then you can check whether it's going OK. And if you're happy with it, you just go ahead and press the tick and it will add that in. Of course, it will shorten your video if you speed it up because that obviously time goes quicker. So your video will be shorter. Test it out by clicking that option and you're all ready to go. Once you're happy with your video, all you have to do is click the upwards arrow at the top right hand corner here. When you do that, it's going to give you some options. I would just leave it on the preset options that it does for you. The only thing I would change is the format. I would make it MP4 so that it's compatible with everything on the internet. So MP4 is the standard file name for a video. So make sure that it's an MP4. Then all you have to do is click the save button and it's going to save your video for you. And depending on the length of the video will depend on how long it takes for the video to save. Once it's saved on your iPad, it will save it to your photo library as default. However, you can send it to other places. As you can see, you can send it to YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Facebook Stories, email or Signal automatically, or you can click other and that will open it up for you to save it to say up your Dropbox or your Google Cloud or anything like that. So that was the video I just did on my iPad using InShot. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do support me by subscribing to my channel and giving me a like. By subscribing to my channel, you're actually bookmarking my channel to your subscription so that you'll easily find my videos in the future. My name's Anita Wong and I'm a video marketing strategist and trainer. And if you have any questions about using InShot on your iPad or your tablet, for your video marketing, then drop them underneath this video and I'll be sure to answer them. And if you want me to show you how to use InShot on your iPad in more depth, then ask those questions below this video as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.